Today I'm going to start on a two-part video project where I'll kind of be making a key switch tester since I actually don't have one. But one thing that I dislike with a couple of key switch testers is that they're just key switch testers and they don't really do anything and aren't functional. So what I'm going to do is turn this cheap Tesoro Tezona numpad into a really sleek wooden functional key switch tester which will be the numpad also. But for this video, I'll be pretty much doing everything except for the wooden enclosure. First thing as always is to disassemble the numpad, which in this case is super easy with a couple of Phillips head screws. And then to completely take it apart, I just have to desolder the USB connection from the board so it can thread through the plastic shell. Fortunately, to make it not confusing at all, the PCB has letters on each of the points that correspond with the wire color. So this is basically what we're working with. We have all the 18 keys, and yes that is 18 instead of 17, since this has an extra key instead of the standard long plus key. And these are the Kale Brown key switches, which are mounted to the metal backplate, which is then on the PCB. The PCB also has the little extended bit at the top, so I'll have to accommodate that for later with the enclosure. And now the tedious task of desoldering. I swap between a desoldering pump and desoldering wick, but at this given time I only had 2mm wick, which is a bit too thin for this but would still work for something like LEDs. Some of these were actually really quite stubborn to get out, so I had to have a couple of cracks and add a couple of the joints by just reapplying more solder onto it. The problem with desoldering on a lot of boards is that they use lead-free solder, so that means that it has a higher melting temperature point in comparison to leaded solder and it just makes everything much harder and increases the risk of damage to the board since you have to use more heat. After all that is finally done, we can see all the empty slots except for the one which I left in since I'm going to be using it. For the switches I'm going to use, I'm using quite common ones which have very similar characteristics as they are all clones of the Cherry MX key switches. So we have Kale and Razor up top and then we have a few oddball ones with React Case, Zorro and the popular Altimu. And then we have the KS3 versions of some translucent cased Gateron switches. And finally we have the 6 Cherry MX key switches that are all at the bottom. Unfortunately with a numpad there is stabilized keys which always will feel a tad different to the others. Although I could just put one unit keycaps on there if I wanted to. Fortunately putting the new switches in and soldering them on is much easier than desoldering. Each switch just snaps into place and soldering is a really easy task. So basically I just put them in clusters so they're more easily identifiable. But to take it a step further, I'm going to spray paint the sides of the keycaps to match the colour of the switch. Ideally, I would have got some sort of transparent set of keycaps for this, but it's a bit too much for me to spend on this since I would have to buy them from the US and would probably have to get the whole keyboard set which I didn't need. Luckily, I didn't have to go out and buy any paints since I have a bunch of these mostly cheapo paints here and I have copper for brown. I wouldn't paint a keyboard with most of these, but since they're just the sides of the keycaps, it should be good enough. I'm also not going to sand the sides since it's already somewhat rough, so I'm just going to go straight to the primer. I've shown this before, but just to paint the sides, all we got to do is mask off the top and the bottom surfaces. And also cut down the sides of the tape, so it has a minimal footprint, since it will prevent good coverage on the surfaces.
And before spraying, I made sure that the tape on each top was firmly pressed down. When spraying, I spray it one way and then turn the keycap upside down and spray it again. This just makes sure that all the areas that were shielded by the tape are then covered again. And then the same thing applies for the coloured paints. After they're done, I applied some satin clear coat for durability and protection, and I think that this should suffice since these areas won't actually have any physical contact. And now to take the tape off, and as we can see, they're not perfectly straight lines, which was to be expected. So I'm just going to use some very fine grit sandpaper to clean it up a bit. And I'm going to just use a bit of soapy water just to make sure. And this will just get the lines to be more distinct. And putting them back on, and yeah, I didn't really think about the layout of the colours when I did this. There's a cluster of the black switches in one spot, but I still think this looks pretty cool and unique, and it turned out quite nice. I wasn't completely patient with the painting, so up close it isn't the cleanest job, but since it's just for me, it's not going to be a problem. Also, just quickly, having all these key switches together produced somewhat surprising results, albeit with a very small sample. The knockoff React Haste black key switches actually feel quite smooth like the Gatorons do, and we all know how the Cherry MX key switches are quite scratchy, but the difference is really quite large. But more of that in the next video. For the next video, which hopefully should be up by the end of the weekend or something, I'm gonna hand make the wooden enclosure for this and put it all back together.